Hello, welcome to another video from Afnewx, looking at Chinese dramaland in the past week. Let's get right into it. First, we've had two dramas going live this week. One is according to schedule, the other one is what? It just aired. So the first one is from ITE and it's the second season of Strange Tales of Tang Dynasty. As I'm sitting down making the video on Friday, it has already aired into episode 8 and this season is 40 episodes in total. And depending on how well this drama performs, if it performs really well on IT, they're gonna try to milk more money out of your pocket. I have actually watched all 8 episodes. I'm very glad to say it's almost keeping exactly to the style and the way the story is told of the season 1. So if you have watched the first season and you're wondering if the second season is safe for you to jump in, I'd say based on the beginning at least, it seems to be pretty reliable. Then the other drama that has dropped literally happened a couple of hours ago ago before I sat down and that would be Yo Ku, Paper Drama, Dash and Youth, Shang Yan Bai Ma, Zui Chun Feng. We have just talked about it, passing censorship and Yo Ku has it and depends on when they want to air it. Now, it's like today I will get to this drama. I hope it's similar to Blood of Youth. That will make me very happy. Then actually during this week, we've had another airdrop drama that kind of didn't promote but immediately got people's attention because it's the following up season of the last year accidentally really successful series, Zi Jing Zu, An Actor's Rhapsody. That's a drama made to rant about the current Chinese drama land, all the sins it commits. Because of the unexpected success of that tiny production last year, the producer, also the main actor, said that he actually got a lot of support and other people trying to buy his IP up. Guess what? Last time was ITE. This year, Tencent got it. So the second season just came out this week, airdropped with no prior warning. 24 episodes, each episode only 15 minutes. And it's again continuing the investor guy who wants to create a drama and how he continues asks the scriptwriter to change the script as they go to film all kinds of classic tropes of Chinese period drama. I have been <laughs> catching up with this. I just want to see how many things it will rant about and it's pretty direct and brutal. It clearly is already ranting about a couple of heavily rented about dramas in the last couple of years and every Chinese person who's watching dramas to some extent would know what this drama is referring to, such as Ju Jingyi's holding the fake uh, cloth in her mouth and pretending that she cannot speak when she's literally biting on basically like a piece of cotton or uh, somebody who would uh, wear shoes that's 20 centimeters on a platform. Also like <laughs> this god happens to be god of war but he's also the most prettiest god of all the uh, celestial palace whatever and then there's a lot of other stuff that this drama rants about. Pretty much everything that does not make sense in Chinese period drama land gets rented about by this drama. If you won't have a blast of a drama renting about dramas, Actors Rhapsody is definitely your choice to go. Then we have news on different dramas at different stages so let's just go through them. We've got a new trailer slash MV music video of a drama that is also likely to air sooner than you think. Period fantasy drama, the typical drama that will get rented about by an actor's rhapsody drama type of drama. Bing Jiangxian hasn't had an official English title yet and that's the period drama led by Bai Lu and Zong Shunxi. It's made by Huan Yu, yeah, because it's Bai Lu and it's on IT, okay, not surprising. And they have released this MV, the music video, singing the song and let you see the characters, they're dressed up, what type of character and plot is gonna happen. It's just like another fantasy idol period drama that features these two people who have been in this type of drama before, no surprising. Zong Shunxi has complete white hair look which I'd say not really suits him that well and there are better white haired guys in Chinese period drama land, let's just say and good luck to it but if it doesn't perform I wouldn't be surprised. Then we have two dramas that have announced they've gotten their license so they can air anytime. The first one is called The Silent Storm. It's only 12 episodes, it's on Tencent and when it shows up it probably will finish airing in a week's time and it's led by a cast that probably will pique some people's interest just because they belong to the more serious kind of categories of actors led by Liao Fan and Zhu Zhu and featuring many other quite well-known middle-age range actors. I think I've seen its trailer among the 40 plus 50 trailers during the Tencent week. It was just that I couldn't 
get to it in that video. So this is one of those dramas I didn't talk about. And apparently they've just gotten their license. So this drama can air anytime. I'll put the trailer up here. Looks like a quite sort of typical mystery thriller spy drama that's set in 21st century. The next one goes back to our uh, <laughs> ICE comfort zone. 36 episodes, period idol drama, led by Tang Yan and Liu Xueyi, Nian Wu Shuang, a moment but forever happened to be another drama set I happened to walk onto last summer when I was in Hengdian. The one that I actually took quite a bit of a tour around it and talked to the carpenter on set about like making the drama and stuff. So if you remember that video. And that set has shown up in pretty much every pair of drama that's shot in Hengdian. It's a very pretty courtyard. So a lot of dramas use that set. It's not just in Nian Wuzhuang. Very typical again, fantasy idol drama. It's still those faces like Liu Xueyi has been in this genre forever. Tang Yan, even though she managed to jump out of it for a bit in Shanghai Blossom, you know, like now back to my comfort zone at the age of 40, still playing a goddess role who's dressed up in white and fake hair and magic. It's just like so mature for people of this age and time. Yeah, sorry for being so sarcastic and unenthusiastic about this genre in general, but I can't. And particularly for this drama, right? Warning, extra warning is the director is Guo Hu. He did direct a more successful period drama, I'll give it. Although personally, I don't think it's impressive, but then he did also direct epic failure drama. So completely <laughs> not trustworthy <laughs> in terms of delivery. Then let's talk about quite a few dramas that have wrapped during this week officially. First is the drama that has been in the making for four months. I did mention it when they started shooting. The current Chinese title is 3928, literally means 3928. And that refers to the two lead characters age. The lady played by Sun Li is 39 years old and the guy is 28 played by Dong Zijian. It's a Youku contemporary drama. English title is A Better Life and it's about this older woman and a younger guy who pairs up in the insurance selling business and become really successful sort of insurance broker team type of situation story. For these two actors, I don't ever not trust in their ability to actually play the roles properly. It totally comes down to production standard and script writing quality. Since they've just wrapped, let's hope we can see this drama by the end of this year. Then a period drama from Tencent called Shanghe Zhen, English title Fight for Love. Come on, can we just like be more inventive with English titling? Has just wrapped this week. Kind of will remind you of a journey to love story because it's talking about nationality, country, love, loyalty, and fighting wars for your country, whatever. And also a female and a male lead both are very good at fighting. So that just reminds you of a journey to love-ish story and it's led by Song Tian and Ding Yuxi. Like I haven't talked about it much I think when they started shooting but I know it's ongoing. I kept seeing paparazzi photos leaked about this drama shooting. Definitely it's gonna involve a lot of wire work, a lot of fighting and I guess utilizing the fact that Song Tian, she started her, her career as a professional dancer and then a Korean band and then coming back to China, although she's been acting for a long time, she really doesn't get that many roles to show off her dancing and her body skill when where she's like best at. So this drama, she will have extensive fighting scenes, a lot, a lot of fighting. Then we have another drama that has wrapped. It's a contemporary drama. I think I talked about it when they started shooting. It's based on a story called Fa Yi Tong Yan, literally means the core Although now its official title is Hai Bian de Mimi, Secrets by the Sea, featuring Peng Guanyin and Zhou Dongyu. Zhou Dongyu is the definitive female lead, and she is the coroner. Also, she's got a twin sister who supposedly was dead when she was very young, but then comes back alive and then messes up her life and people in her life that the twin sister is gonna affect and touch. It's the mystery crime story. I think I briefly mentioned about the synopsis when I first talked about it. They have released a special feature video and it's from Ai Yi. Then we also have a Tencent 30 episodes drama that has finished shooting during this week. When they started shooting, I mentioned about it, I think. If I haven't, then well, it is called Ya She. It's actually based on an IP that when it got adapted into dramas, a lot of people weren't happy about it because they think the cast is too far away from the characters in the book. But anyway, it's already been shot and it's gonna come out. It's Tencent. It's led by Gao Wei Guang, Liang Jingkang, Zhang Miao Yi. It's talking about this guy who owns this antique shop. 
and he has the ability to, in some way, using those artifacts of whatever time in the past to travel back in time and then actually get in contact with the owner of the thing that was made in the time. So basically, it's a contemporary slash period time traveling fantasy or religion drama. Since we've just talked about Zhang Miaoyi, let's talk about her being Lin Daiyu in the film version that was supposed to go into cinema on July the 26th. I think the initial announcement a couple of weeks ago was this, and I did mention in my weekly video too. They postponed it! We're not gonna show this film on July the 26th anymore. We're gonna move it to August the 16th, so 20 days after their initial scheduled time. For what reason? Who knows? Not surprising at all. That's what Chinese cinema has been since the beginning of this year. Nobody really knows when anything is gonna happen. Another film thing that has just happened, and I haven't noticed earlier, but basically there's a film that's right now gonna get released on August the 3rd in cinema in China officially. Let's hope it happens. Right now it has sort of selected cinema pre- screening and I happen to catch quite a few people talking about their reaction to the film. They find it really interesting. So this is called the Tong Ar Shi Shiji Chili. Very interesting title. Literally translated into their English title, Evacuate from the 21st Century. It's actually a Chuan Yue time travel type of story, so nothing special about that, but most people's reaction to this film is it's like a film on psychedelics from beginning till the end. Makes young people really feel, <laughs> like resonate with the wackiness of it. That's what I heard from most of the people who have gone to the premiere, and they're very impressed, feeling it's super unexpected that such a movie can show up in Chinese cinema. So I'm now curious about it. And because it's made by the team that made Li Xianji, Li Xianji many years ago, I do know the reputation of that film and its team. So it makes me feel even more intrigued about this project. And it's led by definitively big face, big male lead Zhang Ruoyun. I wouldn't say I'm so happy with Joy of Life 2, okay? But I do think at the end of the day, he really is the future for the Beijing circle of filmland in China. Let's be honest, we don't have a second candidate at all. <laughs> it's the only guy you can think of who is gonna take them the flag of his father's, literally. Okay, so I am curious about this movie. If I could see it in cinema, that would be great, which I don't think it's gonna happen because it's showing up officially on August the 3rd, which is too soon. But if it actually turned out to be a really interesting movie, I'll definitely want to see it and curious to see a psychedelic <laughs> movie in China where you're not allowed to do any drugs. That would be so cool. And to wrap up this week's video, <laughs> this week there's a really funny gossip thing that happened on China's internet. Basically, Huang Zitao, you know him. He's been in multiple dramas and he used to be in Korea in the boy band and comes back to China like within that generation of Chinese idols. So he's quite well known. He officially announced his romantic relationship with a, a, a girl that his company signed up with a long time ago. And kind of everybody in Chinese entertainment and also like public who cares about idol land stuff knows that they've been together for years. He's been caught on camera with this girl multiple times. He's been in live streams and being asked about his relationship with her and he, his answer is kind of like telling you like they're together but none of your business type of thing. So it's like a secret romantic relationship that everybody knows already in China and he comes out officially announcing it during this week and guess what nobody cares but <laughs> he got very little or like less than he expected attention on social media on trending hashtag because his announcement of romantic relationship hashtag just crashed right into Trump getting shot. And guess which one got bigger in China? Obviously Trump getting shot. The even funnier thing is the photos he announced his romantic relationship with this girl. That photo was actually taken last September on the beach. <laughs> so it's been prepared and just waiting for the right day to drop for almost a year and he just picked the day where Trump got shot. I'm like, it's just heaven dictates that you should not get that much attention, I guess. And also, if you happen to not know, well, I'll tell you like, there's a TikTok video that got really popular on TikTok after Trump got shot. That's a, like a two minute and a half, almost like a campaign video that looks like it's edited by Trump's team because he's editing all his, what he's said before with his very epic shots and the music in the background. And it keeps talking about the fight, fight, fight thing. And also like he will be standing in the way of that. It got a lot of traction and clicks on TikTok after what has happened. And do you know that video was actually edited by a Chinese Billy Billy video editor, like I am like an editor. And they edited it at the end of June. 
this year, right? So like June the 27th, I think this person released that video on his Bilibili account. And it was okay, but it wasn't like super big. And then it has English as Chinese subtitles originally on that Bilibili video. And somebody stole that video from his account, cut the Chinese part off so that the, the video becomes a narrower and put it on TikTok. And after Trump got shot, that video got viral on TikTok. And this person got so scared because suddenly he got so many private messages into his um, mailbox. And he sends out this post on his account to explain what actually happened. And it's like completely unintentional. And he definitely wasn't hired by Trump's team to edit the stuff. He's just having fun with all the footages he can get. And two days later, because of how viral it got, he deleted that video from Billy Billy and deleted his previous response. Now if you go on his account and trying to find that video, it's not there anymore. And <laughs> just find the whole thing, the, the overall ridiculous nature of this sequence of events that has happened in last week in the world. You can overlook and just say that it's coincidental. It just feels everything is arranged. Everything is a script. We live in a scripted world and everywhere you turn, you cannot get out of it because you're in script. Even your attempt to get out of the script is being calculated by the script too. So like technically nowhere you can run. Everything is just playing out as history intended. Let's just have pathetic Chinese drama to keep us sane <laughs> during this insane time of the real world because you know whatever you cannot rely on on the reality of our real world at least you can rely on the continuous crappy quality of chinese drama then. that's one of the most stable thing i've seen in the last couple of years thank you for watching happy legs i'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama watching 精神状态实在是太美了